Good morning, I'm Kristen Folletti and welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Tuesday, May 6th. It's Monday, May 6th, 2013. Since its creation, Bitcoin has come under scrutiny over its plausibility as a currency. Now Canada wants to deploy taxes on Bitcoin transactions. Join us now to provide his breaking analysis surrounding Bitcoin's infrastructure is SiliconANGLE founding editor, Mark Risen Hopkins. Morning, Mark. Happy Monday. Good morning. <laughs> Just in time for Canadian tax season, the Canada Revenue Agency says that users of Bitcoins will have to pay taxes on their Bitcoin transactions, stating that there are two separate tax rules that apply to the electronic currency, depending on whether they are used as money to buy things or if they were merely bought and sold for speculative purposes. Mark, there's been a lot of debate about whether Bitcoin even counts as a legitimate currency. So what are your thoughts on the taxation of Bitcoins? Is it fair? Uh, well, I mean, there's, there's, I guess, a philosophical question as to whether taxes and uh, income taxes are fair uh, in and of themselves. I'll, I'll try to leave that aside uh, for this conversation um, and just assume that taxes are fair <laughs> at, at, the, uh, at face value and, and talk about whether or not taxes are fair for Bitcoin. Um, so uh, any country um, presumably has the right to tax uh, its citizenry and the, the money within its borders in the way that it sees fit, whether it be an income tax or, a, or a, some sort of a commercial tax or, or something like that, or uh, taxes on, on business itself, um, or any of the you know thousands and thousands of taxes that exist, thousands of different types. Uh, so I'd have to say that it's fair for Canada to decide to tax it, just as it was fair when America said that. So America hasn't initially... Uh, or made, made any initial statements specifically to Bitcoin and, and what is fair to tax or what they intend to tax on Bitcoin. But the assumption that everyone in the, uh, that has operated with Bitcoin has uh, uh, worked with uh, has basically said, hey, look, we're going we're gonna to treat this as if it were any other type of currency income. And we're going to report our earnings. I mean, I guess there's people out there that are trading on Silk Road and buying and selling illicit substances that are not going to report their earnings. But I don't think they were going to. Uh, regardless if they were using Bitcoin or not. The vast majority of transactions on Bitcoin are legitimate, and most people that are doing transactions uh, to a great enough uh, uh, value, uh, i.e. the taxable amounts, are reporting that on their income. I know I did, uh, and I didn't really do a whole lot of Bitcoin transaction, but what little I did was included in my, uh, my tax in income tax this year. So do we know how other countries have approached Bitcoin when it comes to taxes? Has there been a lot of talk about this? Oh, yeah. It's, it's something that was talked about very early on. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's interesting because there was a, a story in Wired earlier today uh, that it was called uh, Bitcoin not as secure or safe from regulation as you thought it was. And basically it makes the point by, it was by uh, Daniel Kaminsky who's, who did a very good job uh, kind of showing all the the, the different aspects and strong points and weak points of Bitcoin. But one of the things he pointed out is, look, every transaction is done in public. Uh, and if you dodge your taxes or avoid your taxes uh, for long enough with Bitcoin to such a, 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 into a great amount, it's not going to be a difficult uh, detective work to, to try to track you down. Um, it's, it's only pseudonymity. So uh, as soon as you make a purchase, um, you know, with a with a wallet that you own, uh, and they start to backtrack that to you, um, you know, it's only a matter of time before they figure out all the other little parts of your your wallet uh, on the blockchain, and you know, they could come after you for some amount of uh, of uh, untaxed or, or income that hasn't been taxed, and you're in all kinds of trouble. So it's better to be safe uh, than sorry. Do you feel that the taxing of bitcoins is a good thing or a bad thing? Does it give more weight and legitimacy to the currency, or does it turn those users away who find the appeal of bitcoin in its anonymity? See, I don't think taxing bitcoins really airs at a, uh, any kind of legitimacy. You can you can tax a rock uh, in this world. I mean, it's you, you can anything that has any kind of perceived value uh, will end up getting taxed by the government, uh, and you don't even have to be alive to get taxed. So, I mean. I, I think, but it would be, I think what would lend it some uh, more weight and legitimacy than Bitcoin currently has, I guess, would be for the IRS or the CRA to uh, accept Bitcoin as payment for your taxes. As we talked, to, I don't know if we talked about it here on the show, if it was just on the, uh, a blog post that we, we published, but there was a, a government agency, uh, actually a government contractor that processes the, uh, the, the 
municipal fines and uh, payments for you know thousands and thousands of cities across America that is now accepting Bitcoin as payment, which did air at an, uh, some some legitimacy or some additional legitimacy. I think as we see these types of things where governments are taking payment in Bitcoin increase, then we can talk about legitimacy, increased legitimacy for Bitcoin as a currency. A study of the Bitcoin exchange industry has found that 45 percent of exchanges fail. The study conducted by computer scientists Tyler Moore and Nicholas Kristen followed 40 exchanges on the web and concluded that of the 40, 18 have gone out of business, 13 of which closed without warning, and five closing after, after suffering security breaches, and four other exchanges suffered serious attacks but remained open. MT Gox, the largest Bitcoin exchange, is one of those exchanges recently falling victim to a huge number of DDoS attacks over the past month during a Bitcoin surge. Mark, do you think MT Gox is becoming a weak link in Bitcoin's infrastructure? Uh, so this is uh, actually a, a hotly contested point within the Bitcoin community, uh, within and without. Um, mostly because because MT Gox handles, as they say in their website, eighty percent of uh, Bitcoin to dollar transactions. Um, there, it's a it's very difficult to say that this is not a weak link. You're only as strong as your weakest link. Bitcoin itself is a de decentralized currency. So uh, technically, MT Gox could go offline tomorrow and never come back, and Bitcoin itself would not be uh, fundamentally affected. Here's the problem, though. Uh, Bitcoin has a liquidity issue. It cannot exist without, it cannot uh, persist, I should say, without the existence of, of marketplaces like MT Gox. And um, because you, there's, there's not a, a like kind of a default way to transfer dollars to Bitcoin and back. Now there's there's a growing kind of secondary local market that that is starting to take a lot more uh, prevalence over some of the uh, the smaller uh, centralized markets like MT Gox or uh, Bitfloor, these other ones that exist out there. But they don't they kind of pale in comparison when it comes to transaction volume to MT Gox. So yes, it's a weak link. Uh, that doesn't mean uh, that uh, I think MT Gox is going to go down tomorrow. They have amazing security and they withstood every attack so far. There's a reason why they have 80 percent of the transactions in Bitcoin for Bitcoin to dollar. But um, yeah, they're a weak link. Anytime you have something centralized as a weak link, and many Bitcoin enthusiasts and early adopters are calling for. Uh, the creation of, if not necessarily in, in it, uh, make it part of the Bitcoin uh, uh, standard itself, but maybe the creation of a, uh, of a marketplace that is decentralized in the same manner that Bitcoin is. So there's not a central site that you go to, but uh, a protocol that you use. Mark, we know all investments inherently come with a deal of risk, but does Bitcoin come with more risks than potential rewards? And how is Bitcoin doing at the moment? So there was an interesting little write-up at the Wall Street Journal this morning uh, about uh, kind of like where uh, some of the founders see Bitcoin, founders of uh, the, kind of the Bitcoin open standard and key contributors see it going and see uh, the benefits. Of course, the benefits are, are, are well known and talked about if you, if you do any searches on the web for Bitcoin. I mean, it's, you know, decentralized, not controlled by a government. And, you know, we can go on and on. We've talked about these things before. Um, the risks are obvious. It's a volatile currency. Um, and uh, it remains to be seen whether or not this volatility uh, is inherent to the currency or if it's something that will dissipate over time. Um, it's been, uh, I think, three years, basically, two or three years since I started tracking. Uh, so it's two and a half years since I started tracking um, the, the, the price index on MT Gox as compared to press mentions. And uh, it's almost still to this day one to one. You can see the little knee of the curve as it goes up on uh, the press mentions, and the same thing on the MT Gox spot price. Um, that's not a good thing when your currency uh, can be uh, manipulated by the press or or by numbers of press mentions, because ways of manipulating press mentions and press buzz are myriad and numerous. They write books about it. So. Um, are the risks worth the reward? I think so. I personally uh, think that uh, despite all these risks and all these kind of uh, weak spots in, in the early development of Bitcoin, uh, there's, there, there's still a lot more reward than risk uh, because, you know, there, we don't have a template for this, right? There's no, there's no other like decentralized currency not tied to a government that was ever kind of uh, put out there that we can kind of follow a plan on like, you know, 
what's the best way to launch this sort of thing? We're, we're kind of in new territory. And I think if nothing other than the historical record of, hey, this thing that was tried once and succeeded to a certain degree, uh, that's worth the risk of, of what we're all kind of, uh, kind of grouply experimenting here. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your comments this morning. Great to have you on. Absolutely. And still to come on SiliconANGLE TV, Acer comments on plans for Windows RT. And could you 3D print your own weapon? But first, Wikibon Chief Analyst Dave Vellante joins us from day one of EMC World in Las Vegas.